Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I hope everybody had a safe long weekend. We got a massive amount of snow here in upstate New York. We, I would say about two feet. It's absolutely insane. So I don't think I'll be venturing outside of my house in the near future. But anyway, I've I received a question over the weekend about how the artist uses the armature, the harmonic armature, meaning the 14-line grid, when it comes to the creation process. Because one thing I notice is that when the artist that draws and paints, they come across this information, they think that the grids are used for strictly analytical purposes. But when it comes to drawing and painting, armatures are used in the creation process, and they're used very early on. And I'll talk about that a little bit today. And one of the reasons that I separate out photography from drawing and painting is because there are so many differences between a photograph and a drawing and painting and the actual process in creating art. In photography, design grids are generally used as an analytical tool because the photographer doesn't have the time or the resources to create art as the artist would on the canvas. And there are so many differences between a drawing, painting, and photograph. I'm not going to get into that today. I might save that for another lecture, but it's just important to understand that when you're learning this information, there are certain things, there is certain crossover when it comes to drawing and painting and photography, but you can't confuse the two, and the two art forms are approached very differently. So, But anyway, what you see on my screen is a figure painted by Anna Rosebain. I love her work. I've been studying her work for years. She is becoming incredibly popular, rightfully so. Her work is stunning. But I wouldn't normally do this, but I removed a figure from one of her paintings to demonstrate or at least try to explain how the artist can use the harmonic armature in the creation process. So in art, drawing, and painting, the design phase is thought about very early on. I have two PDFs by Thomas Kegler, and they're linked in my user's guide, and I believe I have them when you download the user's guide. He is showing thumbnail images, and those images are using the harmonic armature very early on. In other words, the idea is that the artist comes to the table with an idea. For example, in this painting above, Anna Rose Bain said, well, I want to paint a dancer, I'm not exactly sure what the background is going to be, but she would probably draw out the figure first. And this is a reason I separated it out from the painting, because she has the idea that she wants to eventually end up with a painting of a dancer, but in the creation process, she's going to do a lot of sketches first. So normally this would be a drawing first, okay? But she has the idea for the figure. And when you're looking at the figure on my screen, there's three things you should look for. A dominant horizontal, a dominant vertical, and a dominant diagonal line. Usually this is the beginning of a composition. For example, I can see that right here would be a dominant horizontal line. You have the outstretched leg with the toe pointing, and you have this right here. So I would consider this a dominant horizontal line. The figure, this section here, upper body, I would consider this the dominant vertical. And of course, this would be the dominant diagonal line. So once you've drawn your sketches out, and like I said, artists will do many, many sketches. They're working out an idea. They have an idea. The idea always comes first before the design. Okay, you don't create a design and then try to fit your subjects in that. Generally, that's not how it's done. Of course, you could do it. In other words, you could come up with a design and then draw out all, all your elements separately and then compose them. That's it. That is one way the artist can design. But in this case, I'm simply going to say that 
The artist is drawing out several sketches of the figure, so they have something laid out. They've established a few dominant lines, and then they'll go to the grid and decide where they want to place those lines. And let me just bring up a grid here. So if I wanted to place those lines, I could say anywhere in this armature, I could drop the first line. Let's say it's the horizontal line. Wherever you have two diagonal lines intersect, you can drop a horizontal or a vertical line. Let's say I'm going to place the vertical or the horizontal line right here, where these diagonal lines intersect across the grid. So this would be my dominant horizontal line. I could say right here would be my vertical, where these diagonal lines intersect. I could place that there. And then I could use, for example, one of these diagonal lines as a dominant line, even here. So I could place my figure, using Anna Rose Bain's example, and I could place it along this grid as I see fit. Now, of course, the armature has an infinite amount of variety, so you can play around with this. But the idea is you can draw your elements first. You come up with the idea. You do some sketches. You can even draw a rough draft of an armature, which Thomas Kegler shows you how to do. You come up with the idea, and then once you have the idea, you enlarge it to the size of your canvas, and then you transfer that information over. And I just added a PDF from an artist that demonstrates that process. It's very difficult to find information on this. And I've spent a lot of years doing research. And what I'm trying to do is compile enough information to give the artist an idea of how they can use this in the real world. And as I've said before, I think the 14-line harmonic armature is the best system to start with before you dive into dynamic symmetry. But you can essentially do this with root rectangles as well. So in this example here, I've now placed a few dominant lines, and then I'll just bring up the actual painting with the grid on top of it. So I can, like I said, drop a dominant line here, and I'll just convert this to red so it stands out. I can drop my dominant horizontal line here, as I had mentioned before with the outstretched leg, and I'll bring that here. And then I can place a dominant vertical here. And I have a diagonal line here, as well as here. So with that figure drawn out, I bring it over or I draw a grid and then I place that figure on the grid to where I want it on the grid. But again, like I said, you can play around with this a lot. Every composition is going to be different and the armature allows a tremendous amount of a variety. But you can tell with just the three lines I can place my figure. However, I can start getting a little bit more detailed. I could drop a vertical here and then drop a diagonal line where that touches and this these two corners touch. So with just a few lines, I placed my figure. And also notice here, Anna Rose Bain is using the diagonal lines here to place the shoulder alignment. And I do have a little bit more detailed bre breakdown of this, and let me show you. A few dropped lines just to lock her subject into place. She's locking the head into place along with the diagonal lines of the shoulders, the dominant diagonal line, and a few supporting diagonal lines along with the dominant horizontal line. A few lines. She places her figure, which was sketched out before, and this is how the artist can use the armature at the beginning phase of the idea. In other words, the artist is not going to the canvas, painting this all out, and then laying a grid on it going, well, it sort of lines up. That's not what they're doing. In photography, that's what you do because it's a completely different art form. But in drawing and painting, the design phase comes very early on in the process. And if you haven't checked out the PDF that I just added, check it out. It's in my art highlights page. 
It's a very, very short PDF. It's worth looking at because it gives you an idea what the artist is doing. And the artist explains how they transfer that design grid along with the original sketch onto the canvas and then she can go to paint. But that's going to be it for today. Thanks for joining me. I will be doing more of these in the future to help clarify this information for the artist. But I appreciate you joining me. Thanks.